decided to do a, a short video about what to pack and what to bring for uh, the Rio Grande in Argentina. Uh, it's a long way to travel uh, and essentially a little preparation ahead of time will hold you in good stead and essentially uh, enhance your overall enjoyment of the trip uh, if you bring the right equipment, be that from the fishing equipment and also from a clothing perspective uh, because you're certainly uh, in the elements down here even though it's uh, the South America or the Argentine uh, summer it is still uh, you know very far south and you can have very much four seasons in a day uh, even overnight frost uh, so you need to, to, to pack accordingly um, starting with uh, the clothing I would always travel um, layering is really important uh, so you need to have all all of the layers uh, to basically cut through uh, the wind uh, and just just keep you warm and comfortable on the river uh, essentially if you are comfortable on the river you're going to enjoy the time on the river a lot more and, and just I think fish better uh, as a result little things so layering uh, fleece layers uh, you know down jackets all this kind of stuff fantastic a lot of this is to, to actually uh, help with the wind rather than actually uh, rain so you do need a, a good rain jacket definitely um, so that is essential but actually the layering underneath the rain jacket is as important because that actually even though of course it can rain the purpose of a lot of this clothing is actually to keep you warm and out of the wind rather than away from uh, a, a lot of the rain. Um, beyond the jackets and stuff, uh, a buff can really help just to keep the, uh, the wind from the back of your neck. Um, so, uh, and also, uh, the, the sun down here is really, really strong. So, you know, if, if it is a sunny day, you can pull the buff up. Uh, just to protect your face a little bit as well um, but on that front again the sun is very strong so do make sure that you pack some uh, strong suntan lotion uh, even on windy days where you don't really feel it uh, there is actually a hole over the ozone layer down in this section uh, so you have to be really really careful uh, so when you don't think you are catching the sun you are catching the sun so a buff is a really good way to go along with along with sun cream um, gloves again if your hands get wet and then the wind starts to blow your hands get really cold so uh, some mitten type gloves uh, are really 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 worth packing so definitely uh, bring a pair of them again it's just about layering um, transporting to and from the river a little backpack uh, so a backpack just to um, bring all your fishing equipment a uh, lot most of the time you will be you know, within uh, easy reach of a vehicle uh, so you can actually if you wanted to leave this in the vehicle or the guide will happily carry it for you but a roll top dry waterproof bag uh, is a good way to go and it is worth carrying me personally this is actually my hand luggage so uh, when I'm on uh, when I'm on the flights and stuff this is what I carry all my hand luggage in so rather than carrying a duplicate bag uh, this is actually what I what I choose to travel with um, when you're actually walking around uh, with the fishing itself, I find rather than actually putting too much stuff in my uh, fishing jacket, I prefer to carry uh, a waste bag. So a little dry waste bag, uh, yeah, everything is in within very easy reach uh, and basically everything that you need uh, for fishing a pool or two will be within very easy reach. On your waist. Um, so in here again just some nylon material, some tippet material uh, and a selection of tips. Uh, so I tend to carry, uh, the fishing is as complicated as you want to make it essentially. I tend to carry uh, a floating main body uh, on the fly line section and then uh, multi tips. So um, you know, it'd be a mistake just to carry, for example, a Skagit. You, you can bring a Skagit for high water or if it's a particularly blustery day, uh, but a Scandi line uh, where you can put some 
uh, tips and stuff on will also hold you in good, ste uh, good stead and it's better to carry one uh, for me personally anyway just to make travel a bit lighter I tend to carry one floating line or floating body which I can vary the tip level on according to the prevailing conditions and I will carry these tips down for, you know from a floating hover uh, intermediate type 3 type 5 type 7 and then some heavier stuff as well so for example t11 t14 t17 and even t20 um, essentially you're coming a very long way so it's better to have all of your bases covered uh, these tips take up very little room uh, so it is worth you know packing a few of these uh, again you only really need to carry perhaps one reel one running line and then a couple of different heads and then these tips will really add versatility to your setup uh, but that's a good way to go from a from a traveling perspective and to ca uh, cut down on bulk from the nylon perspective or the leader leader material don't fish light you know there's some huge huge fish in this river uh, most seasons fish of over 30 pounds uh, are landed and certainly every week uh, between the lodges you will get fish of over 20 pounds um, even on a calm uh, so a windless day, you know, with a bit of sunshine and stuff. I, talking about diameter wise, I really wouldn't go under 0.28 millimeter, 0.3 millimeter, uh, that kind of that diameter, which will usually give you 15, 15 pounds or so. So I really wouldn't go under 15 pounds and work up between. If I was to put a window 0 0.30 to 0 0.40 millimeters. That's the kind of window you need to be working with within uh, within your leader material. I carry some fluorocarbon, uh, and especially again for the water like it is at the moment. I'm down here at uh, Aurelia Lodge uh, on the, on the Rio Grande. The 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 water is very clear at the moment, uh, so I just from a confidence perspective, I do like to fish fluorocarbon, uh, and again just in in, in varying. Uh, varying diameters or varying breaking strains um, but you know what beyond that uh, I carry bog standards these are from larger spools but essentially this is 15 pound uh, or you know the equivalent of Maxima Ultra Green so you know a worldwide uh, you know highly uh, highly recommended leader material so uh, Maxima Ultra Green I've got some in or, or, or the equivalent it's uh, 15 and I've also got a spool of 22 as well for the evening or the low light uh, fishing when the fish are essentially uh, a lot less wary. So that's the leader material. Uh, to also carry, uh, there's no night fishing as such on the Rio Grande, it's against the, the Argentine laws, uh, but you certainly do fish into the evening and into last light. Uh, so it is worth bringing uh, a head torch. Uh, just a small packable head torch is really recommended so do bring a small head torch um flies you know i've been coming down here for 18 years or something similar uh so i've amassed a, a huge selection most of the lodges that you visit will have a really good selection uh as will the guides that you're out with on a daily basis so Bring some of your home patterns. Make sure if you do bring them that they are on, on very strong hooks. If you're tying your own, I tend to recommend tying them on just a really heavy gauge, uh, so salmon, steelhead, sea trout type hooks. Uh, also carp hooks. Uh, carp hooks tend to be uh, very strong for their size, so carp hooks are also a very good way, good way to go. Uh, but if in doubt, leave it until you're down here and the lodges will cater well uh, for you. Um, this is just a box of just general uh, larger nymphs, woolly bugger uh, type flies. Uh, I won't go into these in too much detail. Uh, box of nymphs, uh, you can see a lot of rubber legs and stuff. People often ask why rubber legs. A lot of rubber legs and the type of flies that fish down here, which are so specific, they're actually uh, based on tradition as much as anything. Uh, so a lot of the original patterns are actually from uh, the steelhead fraternity uh, rather than perhaps the European influences uh, but certainly the uh, the small you know our our traditional stokes tails squirrel blue and silvers um, undertakers uh, all, all those types of flies do work do work well so I would always recommend 
bringing some of those with you as well, especially if they are on uh, strong hooks. So definitely bring them uh, through to you know, some lighter patterns. So a very good fly down here is called the, the Green Machine. Uh, I also tie a, a, a black version as well, but uh, 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 the Green Machines are a fantastic fly to bring. And then in, uh, you know, pulling through some of the, the, the runs, faster waters, uh, and also just, uh, especially in the in the evening as well, uh, some sun rays. Uh, that's a particularly long one, uh, which I do like fishing some of the, the, the really long sun rays down here. Uh, but then through to, you know, so much smaller sun rays. So uh, sun rays and also collie dogs. Uh, obviously, the collie dog is a you know, tends to be a, the, the heavier variant. Um, so do bring some, uh, so, you know, some some copper, uh, copper or brass collie dogs as well. Uh, but collie dogs, sun rays, monkeys, uh, all of them work really well. So if you have them, bring them. Don't bring trebles. No trebles uh, are allowed. Uh, you know what? Just a, a, a wide gape single uh, works as works as well as anything. And then the other thing you you, you can never be without down here uh, are leeches. So the leeches. Uh, so the if it's uh, if if the water is very cold, uh, sometimes in the daytime they will use uh, the the chartreuse um, leeches in the daytime, uh, but then tend to be in the evening uh, in last light when it's failing. Uh, you can use some um, intruders. Intruders work really well, or then what they call leeches, which is basically just uh, rabbit stripped, uh, or rabbit strip, um, yeah, streamer patterns uh, with a bit of flash and stuff in the body. Uh, black tending to be the the, the best color uh, because of silhouette as much as anything. Uh, and I tend to fish some of these incredibly long. Uh, which you'll see there that's probably six seven inches long uh, if not eight inches long um, so I like to fish uh, some very long uh, some very long leeches uh, and find that they are they are very successful uh, and that's tied on like a Waddington shank and stuff but uh, again just a single hook it's got a, a 50 pound braid uh, mount uh, that's actually come away from the rabbit strip. You can fish them loose or you can attach that tail hook to the to the rabbit strip. But yeah, you wouldn't be wouldn't be without leeches. That's kind of the fly setup, leaders, uh, poly leaders, all that kind of stuff. From the rod perspective, you can bring a single hander. Uh, you know, if there's uh, if you're fishing a tributary, for example, you can fish the Menendez. You really want to be fishing a single hander, ten foot for an eight weight, uh, ten foot for seven. Uh, if it's a strong rod, a 10 foot for 7 is fine, but otherwise 10 foot for an 8 weight uh, is, is a good way to go. Uh, and also on the river, you know, on the, on the main Grande, if the river is low, clear, uh, or, you know, there's very little wind, you can certainly get away with fishing uh, a single-hander as well. Um, it can be hard work, especially if the wind does kick up. Uh, Line-wise, you know, you want something that's going to load easy uh, and allow you to just cover water very easily uh, this is the airflow bomber line uh, which for me works really really well it's uh, my favorite one of my favorite lines for uh, fishing at home again i just fish the floating line uh, and then add tips as as needed so the uh, the the uh, uh the airflow bomber line or the airflow 40 plus maybe as well that's uh, that's a good way to go um, but again, yeah, the, 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 the single hander does have a place. Um, the, then into the double handers. Uh, if you're coming in the main part of the season, I would say yeah, late January, throughout February, perhaps early March. Most of, more often than not, you will not need to go longer than a 13 footer. I think that a 13 footer is a very practical rod for the Rio Grande. Um, if you're coming early in the season or late in the season, if the water is very high, uh, or if you're fishing one of the lodger, uh, lower lodges such as Vision Maria, Maria Betty, the, the you know below the Menendez essentially where it can be a bigger river, sometimes then maybe a 14 footer would be would be called for. But I think for the majority of the time, a 13 footer is a good way to go. For the majority of my fishing down here nowadays, I tend to fish switch rods. Uh, switch rods allow you know even if it's a windy day i can do 
most things nowadays with switch rod uh, the technology and even the lines to suit uh, have really come on leaps and bounds so i tend to fish more nowadays with with switch rods so uh 10 and a half to 11 and a half foot uh number seven number eight uh that type of that type of range and those switch rods are fantastic you know i probably i'm probably fishing them nine times out of ten nowadays so if you're bringing three rods bring a a, a you know a, a a 10 foot number seven 10 foot number eight single hander uh and then a, a switch rod again 10 and a half to 11 foot in seven uh, number seven number eight and then the um uh, a double hander such as a 13 foot for a number eight number nine uh, uh but again if you are fishing some of the lower lodges or early late in the season uh something a bit stouter so, so for example a 14 foot for a, a number nine ten maybe a better tool for the job again just floating lines uh, and just varying varying the tips it just helps you cut down on carrying spare spools um, most of my rods such as this one this is uh one of the loop uh cross st travel rods this comes in six piece the beauty of that such as this one this is the uh, loop evotech cast uh, i think that's a four piece but because it's 10 foot uh, it's you know the sections are quite short all of these uh, make for very easy travel uh, which is also important so I tend to just carry them all in uh, a tube uh, so I can get four a good four rods in one tube so rather than having to carry multiple tubes and this actually fits within my main luggage uh, so in my uh, in my bag so I don't need to check this in as a separate item everything is enclosed within one bag uh, which makes life a lot lot easier so highly recommend getting one of these just yeah it just uh, the capacity allows multiple rods to be carried in, in in one and makes life just a lot easier than you know waiting for extra baggage items to come through or baggage items getting lost um, final note uh, you know you need your waders you need chest waders obviously uh, I wouldn't bring neoprenes just bring um, breathable and then just layer underneath again layering is really important um, on the boot perspective, the, the, the Rio Grande is very easy to wade. Um, you don't need, personally, I don't think you need wading staffs. Uh, you know, you can bring it if you are uh, not a very confident wader, obviously. Uh, but the, the, the riverbed tends to be gravel, uh, so the wading is very, very easy. As a result, um, the, yeah, the, 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 the sole is of less importance. You don't need, you know, the felt soles with studs for example um, one thing a particular note is that the Rio Grande does have Didymo this is actually really really important uh, especially for uh, you know essentially the health of your home waters do remember that there is Didymo present so felt soles is not really a good thing uh, to use on the Rio Grande for that reason uh, because essentially the felt takes take so long to, to dry uh, that you may transmit Didymo to your home stream so please 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 bear that in mind hence why a rubber rubber sole may actually be a much better uh, way to go put a couple of studs in there sure no problem at all not really necessary again on, on the Rio Grande uh, but again just because of the, the Didymo and stuff I highly recommend bringing rubber, rubber sole rather than felt sole uh, and that is basically it um, again if you just you know I, I think keep things simple I keep things compact so rather than carrying you know multiple reels just have a look at you know these tips that I was talking about um, so I can use these on virtually all of the lines I've just mentioned they can just be put on them make sure that the tips are the salmon version do not bring trout versions uh you know these are these have the core of 24 pound breaking string you need that and more essentially uh so do not bring any of the trout versions do make sure that you have sufficient breaking string in the poly leaders or whatever leaders you you, you choose to bring uh, but again i can put these on in varying lengths you know you got them from actually they do some eight footers through to 14 footers and yeah the shorter ones are more applicable on the single hander for example where i can put these quite easily on the uh the 13 footer or also on the on on the switch rods but do bring yeah a good variety of them and just allows you to you know to, to be yeah to be lighter uh, pack lighter and be more compact in your approach and again just pack, put them all you know uh when you're out for a day's fishing just put them all in uh, your your waste pack and and you're good to go